Hello, I'm Jeff Kersey, and in this scene I've chosen an abandoned farmhouse in Tuscany. It gives me an opportunity to use some lovely rich tones and colours, and also to get that texture in the stonework of the old buildings. It does need me to use a slightly different palette to my usual choice to get these lovely rich warm colours. The first thing I've done is to use my tracing and get the basic outlines down on the paper. And I've put some masking fluid on some of the areas where I know I'm going to need white paper later on. I'm going to start by mixing some colours for the sky. I'm going to start by mixing a colour to give me a glow in the lower part of the sky. I'm using a number 14 brush and a mixture of Naples yellow with a little bit of permanent rose in it. Make sure that this is quite dilute, plenty of water in it because we don't want too strong a colour at this stage. I'm washing the brush out to get rid of the Naples yellow and I'm making a thin wash of cobalt blue followed by a thin wash of ultramarine blue. And then I'm going to take a large flat brush, actually a one inch flat brush, load it up with clean water and I'm going to dampen the whole of the sky area. And when I say dampen, it's a case of not too wet, but a nice even coating of water. A good tip here is to just glance at your piece of paper sideways on like that so you can catch the sheen of the water on the surface. And you can often see if you've missed a bit then. As soon as I've done that, I'm going back to the number 14 brush. And I'm starting with that dilute mixture of Naples yellow and permanent rose and just brushing that across the lower portion of the sky. Probably a touch more permanent rose in it. Just along the lower part of the sky. And then I'm cleaning the brush before picking up the cobalt blue wash and letting that blend in. And I'm taking the cobalt blue right to the top. Remember at the moment we're still working with thin washes, nothing too strong at the moment. And then on top of the cobalt blue, at the very top of the sky, right where it goes out of the top of the picture, I'm just brushing in, still with the number 14 brush, a few streaks of the ultramarine blue. I'm now picking up a number 6 brush, and I'm going to put a bit of detail in along that horizon line to suggest the distant trees. And I'm making a sort of purple mixture with cobalt blue and permanent rose. And I'm going to grey that slightly by adding a touch of burnt sienna to it. Now this colour should be a little bit thicker than the washes that you put in the sky. And the idea with this wash is to drop it into the still wet sky so it softens and gives us soft misty shapes for the distance. Just try it first with the tip of the brush, tentatively at first, to watch it doesn't spread too far. Just, just keep an eye on it, see what happens. That's okay, because that's just softening gently and it's suggesting the shapes of distant trees. Once the timing's right, like that, you have to work quite quickly then. Working the way right across, bringing the colour right down to meet the line of masking fluid. And you can see the importance of this colour being a bit thicker than the washers in the sky, because we don't want it to just soften in and look like more cloud. We want it to be a definite tone darker. I'm going to make one or two of them look a little bit larger. Let's take them up a little bit further into the sky. Still working onto a soft, wet background so that I get that all-important, misty, distant shape. I'm now going to take another fairly strong mixture of Viridian and Permanent Rose. It makes a sort of grey-green colour. Again, fairly thicker, certainly thicker than the last wash you just put in. And then again with the tip of the number six brush, I'm just touching that in to make some darker tree shapes right where this line meets the distance. This is so when I get a nice bright colour on the field, it has these darker trees behind it to contrast with. Okay, just working the way along. Again, the timing's just right because I'm still dropping this colour into a damp background. If this colour is too thin, you'll start to get cauliflowers at this stage where it runs right up into the sky and where it stops running, you get that raggy sort of edge that we call a cauliflower shape. That's because the paint is too thin. So this has definitely got to be thicker than the last colour. Okay, now that that's in place, it does need some time to dry. 
Well, now that the sky's dry, I've just got a little bit more work to do on that background by putting a few little shapes in to indicate some cypresses right in the distance. And for that, I need a bit more of that greeny gray color mixed from Viridian and Permanent Rose, about the same strength as when I used it on these distant trees a few moments ago. And if you look at your sky and you see that the, the permanent rose has separated from the blue, creating almost like a pinky coloured halo, don't worry about that. I think that's quite effective. OK, so I've got this colour now for these little cypresses and I've got a number two brush so that I don't make the shapes too big. I'm almost using the side of the brush to print these little tree shapes in. Like that, just, just catching the, the texture of the paper, bringing them right down to the masking fluid. You can develop the point of them with the very tip of the brush, but you do need a brush with a good point for this. Put a couple in, in there, and maybe some a little bit further along. We'll put three in here. And they're varying the height of them so that nothing looks too organized and symmetrical. And just developing the shapes with the very tip of the brush. And once they're dry, we'll be able to take the masking fluid off. Well, now that the paper's completely dry, I've removed the masking fluid and I'm going to start now mixing colours that will take us from the horizon right through to the middle distance, occupying all that area behind the buildings. That's why the masking fluid has still been left on the buildings for the moment. I'm going to start with the colour for the distant fields that will tone in with the sky. So I'm using that same mixture again of Naples yellow with a hint of permanent rose. Not quite so much permanent rose on it. It's got more of the Naples yellow in it than when I used it in the sky. OK, I now need a bright green, but it's a bright sunlit green. So I'm going to take Oriolin. Important when you're mixing a green from yellow and blue to always put the yellow in first. And then I'm just adding a touch of cobalt blue, which will quite soon turn that into a bright green. And I want a sort of soft straw colour for the background. I'm going to start with some raw sienna and I'm going to add to that burnt umber, making a, a sort of yellowy brown. Now I want these colours to blend and merge with each other. So I'm still working with the fairly large 14 brush so that I can sweep it across. But because I want them to blend, you might think, well, should we wet the paper? But no, I don't think that's a good idea. That will weaken your colours. So it's better to have them mixed and ready and paint them in quite rapidly. Starting with the distant colour, that's the Naples yellow with a hint of permanent rose in it. OK, and as I bring that down, I'm introducing the thin wash of bright green. That's the Oriolin with a hint of cobalt blue right across the distance there. Not too much green. There's more of the sort of browny straw colour than the green, if anything. So before long, I'm starting to introduce the raw sienna and burnt umber mixture, bringing that right down behind the old farmhouse and to that line of masking fluid across the middle distance. And let's bring some in from this side here. Getting rid of all the white paper, making sure that you don't leave any gaps of white paper showing. Maybe another hint of green into there. And then some more of the raw sienna and burnt umber. So that this colour gets progressively stronger as we head towards the middle distance, I'm now just going to add a bit more burnt umber to the mixture so that it's browner. And while that last colour is still wet, I'm brushing that in just to make the colour a bit richer and stronger as we get towards the middle distance. Now, while it's still wet, I'm going to take the number six brush and I'm going to mix some more Oriolin and Cobalt Blue, but a bit stronger this time, a bit more of both pigments in and a bit less water. And I'm going to mix a darker green as well with Oriolin Ultramarine Blue and a little bit of Burnt Sienna, almost an olive green. Then taking the first of those greens, 
just taking advantage of the still damp background and putting a few shapes in for a, for a hedgerow and some bushes across the middle distance there, right down to meet the masking fluid. Behind the building there, right across the middle distance again, really making sure I don't leave a white gap between this, this colour and the masking fluid. And then I'm going for the darker green. This is this sort of slightly olive green and put some of that in. And you can see how by timing it right, we get a soft bush-like shape. You've got to remember trees, hedgerows, bushes, they don't have hard edges, they have a soft edge. Bit more into there. Help to define the shape of that roof by putting a bit behind there. And then I'm just going to add to that dark green some burnt umber and a little touch of ultramarine blue to put an even darker, almost browny green in one or two places as well, still taking advantage of the damp background. If you put this in too early, it spreads too far. I think what helps with the timing is how long it takes you to mix the colour is just about the right timing to then apply it. Let's put a bit more into there, let it soften into the background. And again, that now needs some drying time. 